WMAL. Now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. WMAL. 8.37 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. It's Brian Wilson, Larry O'Connor, and on the line right now, Brett Baer from the Fox News Channel. He is the host of Special Report on the Fox News Channel. Each weekday at 6, one of the best places you can go to get up to speed on what's happening inside the nation's capital. Hello, Brett. Good morning. All right, so if right now, topic one in Washington has to be what's going on with the president, his desire to get the support of Congress to take action against Syria. Where does Fox News have it as far as the, as the count right now on Capitol Hill? Uh, right now, if it were held today, by our vote uh, count, it would not pass. It would overwhelmingly go down in the House uh, and would squeak a loss uh, in the Senate. Now, uh, that can change, obviously, and these are partial head counts, and you know people can change their minds. But <clears throat> it does not cross party lines. I mean, it no, is it really not uh, partisan here. I mean, you have Democrats and Republicans having a real hard time coming to this vote because, frankly, they're just getting an earful at home. They are. And, 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 and we've seen some evidence that we've been talking about that today. And, and yet, some members of Congress, even though the, the polls suggest that they're getting an earful, in fact, they'll admit they're getting an earful. We had uh, Congressman Jim Moran on this program the other day. He said, yes, overwhelmingly people are calling and saying, don't support the president on this one. And yet he chooses to support the president. This is going to be a tough vote for some members. Yeah. And, you know, you think about uh, the perpetual campaign cycle that House members are on, particularly, uh, and a big vote like this, where most of the people are against it, and in some districts it's 80-20 against, uh, that opens up a lot of challenge uh, for someone potentially. You know, Eleanor Holmes Norton from uh, District of Columbia, she kind of in an un- unvarnished way said, I'm against this action, but I am going to vote for it out of loyalty to the president. Hmm. I think there is a fear, a real fear, that if the president goes down on this vote, that even though he could act and has the authority as, as an executive of, of the country to act, uh, the vote loss would dramatically hinder the rest of his agenda up on Capitol Hill. Well, and, and to that end, Brett Barham, so much of the rhetoric about this vote and trying to drum up support for the vote, have uh, they've used the statement that America's prestige and the prestige of the presidency, not this particular president, but the presidency, is at stake. So if he doesn't get that support, uh, what are the ramifications long-term for the, the presidency and its prestige and its influence? Well, <clears throat> I do think that there is a lot. there will be a lot of debate about this effort and how... Um, this military action was talked about publicly. Uh, almost everyone in Washington believed, as we got up to that Rose Garden speech on Saturday, that this was going to happen and that um, it was it was in the cards. And then the turn towards Congress, while a lot of members had called for that, uh, there are people who are supportive of executive power and previous administrations and the current administration who wonder whether this is precedent setting. Going forward. Yeah, it must be interesting when you sit down at your panel um, with you know Charles Krauthammer and, and William Crystal and all the other uh, Fox All Stars. Y- you probably aren't quite sure where they're going to come down on this one. Yeah, and I think that is indicative of where lawmakers are. Mm-hmm. You really don't know where some lawmakers are on this. I mean, when Barbara Mikulski of Maryland comes out and says after a classified briefing, you know, I really I'm just not sure. I don't think I have all the, that I need to have. You know, I mean, this is a yeah. diehard supporter of right. the administration and the president. All right. So, look, I mean, the the president has made it very clear, and I think Secretary of State uh, John Kerry has made it clear, that even if Congress says no, which, you know, if the vote were held today, I agree with you. I think I think the president would not get the support he's looking for from Congress. Even if they vote no, the president may choose to go ahead. What do you think will be the political reaction in this town if that is the scenario that plays itself out? Well... There'll be a lot of uproar if that's the case. <clears throat> also remember this. I mean, we could have a couple of weeks of debate, according to Nancy Pelosi on the, on the House side. Uh, the Senate seems poised to, to act next week, um, but there, this could be dragged out for a little bit. Um, if the vote is no 
and then the president goes ahead, goes ahead and acts. Um, I, I think that'll be stunning, not only here in Washington, but around the world. Remember, at the end of this month is the UN security, the UN meeting, the mm-hmm. World United Nations meeting, twenty uh, fourth to October fourth. Um, imagine the speeches there, if after getting rebuffed by his Congress, yes. President Obama goes forward. Um, it, it'll be quite something to see. Now, personally, talking to people up on the Hill, there's a lot of skepticism about that. Um, and they wonder, over the next few days, how much the full-court press is going to be from the president and the administration. Because if you look at, for example, his political arm, the old campaign, OFA, which is now organizing for action, they are not pushing this no, no. grassroots effort. They've what? lobbied for everything else, for health care and tax plan and immigration reform, but they're not pushing. There is a benefit for the vote. for the president in all this, though, because if it goes two weeks, like you say, that's going to that's going to go right through the anniversary of nine eleven, the one year anniversary of Benghazi. It's going to push us right up against October first, when Obamacare is supposed to be enacted. The these are things runs out of money September thirtieth. All of these things are things that we will not be focusing on because we'll be focusing on this debate. That is so conspiratorial of you, Brian. Well, I know, but I mean, really, the timing really <laughs> does work true. to his favor. Yeah, it's so true. You're exactly right. Yeah. I mean, think about how many other things are on the plate. Uh, the continuing resolution at the end of the month to fund the government. Huge battle. Some conservatives still want to tie the funding of Obamacare to that, or the debt ceiling increase, which is mid-October. Right. You have a whole host of things on the calendar that. We are not talking about about because Syria is sucking the oxygen out of Washington. And, Brett, you talk about uh, the U.N. meeting at the end of this month, but right now this is happening in the shadow of the G20 summit. The president is on Vladimir Putin's turf. Uh, What is this doing to his gravitas there while he's being uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to say undercut, but he's certainly not being supported by uh, his Congress back at home? Yeah, I I don't think it's, it's a good scenario. I mean, there was an image yesterday of, of the president walking alone to dinner. Putin walks to dinner. He, you know, he's got all of these leaders around him chatting and laughing, and there's this one solo shot of President Obama Gee. walking to dinner 30 minutes after that. Uh, I guess he had been talking to the, the president of uh, Brazil, who also has a real problem with him because of the NSA. Because of NSA, yes. Which, um, so it's, a, I think, a lonely walk um, <laughs> for... Uh, the president, as far as trying to get allies, the hope is, privately, the White House is saying that he could come out with 10 countries out of the 20 uh, that support the action. I don't think he's right. there yet. All right. Brett Bear, real fast. Redskins by how many over the Eagles? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say seven. All, All right. right. Touchdown. There you go. Brett Take Bear. the Redskins minus seven. Always right. a pleasure, Brett. We'll see you guys. All right.